Hello everyone and welcome. May I invite you to my presentation on the flood routing technology called SunnyPore. This geotechnical sewer rehabilitation method can seal and prolong the service life of entire gravity-fed sewer collection systems in a surprisingly simple way. Using merely two smart fluid components and hydrostatic pressure to let the physics work in our favor and achieve 99% water tightness of all pipes and manholes, including evidence. First of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Chilla Pal. Since 1990, I am the general manager of our family-owned licensing company called Sanipor Vertriebs GmbH, registered in Germany but operating from Austria. Since 2003, I have also been active in the United States. In collaboration with local contractors and the engineering firm Brown and Caldwell, I was conducting and supervising Sunnypore projects in different states, such, such as Louisiana, Florida, Wisconsin, Texas, and Washington. As licensors, we teach and train contracting companies or anyone who wants to become a Sunnypore installer. We also assist and support engineers in the design phase of rehabilitation projects against infiltration. Sunnypore will significantly differ from all rehabilitation methods you have worked with so far. Its technical simplicity and geotechnical approach offer multiple advantages. These are, for example, great performance and efficiency, durability of the silicate-based mineral grout, and the improved service life of sealed pipes and manholes. I will show you Sunnypore projects and their achieved results in the United States and Europe, as well as the WORF Award of Excellence from 2013. Finally, you may want to know how to prepare a Sunnypore project. Please collect your questions and send them to office at sunnypore.com. The Sunnypore flood grouting technology was developed by a high-ranking Hungarian scientific institute for silicate chemistry in the 1980s. Our company has introduced the method in Germany in 1989. We applied for the technical and environmental approval at the German Institute for Construction in Industry, a major regulatory authority. In 1993, Sunnypore was the first trenchless technology in Germany, and I believe worldwide, to receive such an approval. It is equivalent to a standard and relates to the European norm 1610 for water tightness and allowance rates of gravity-fed pipes and manholes. In the United Kingdom, WRC has granted an approval in 2006. In the United States, EPA and WERF have reported and listed Sunnypore in several of their publications. The biggest documentation so far was the WERF report from 2013, dealing with the Sunnypore project in Seattle in 2011. Initially, let me explain where Sunnypore flood grouting can be carried out, what do we regard as our work unit, and which pipes are candidates for sealing with Sunnypore. This well-known drawing shows a separated sewer pipe system and the occurring sources of infiltration and inflow. Sunnypore does eliminate infiltration. Groundwater, seawater and rainwater, which are seeping through the soil into leaking pipes and manholes, are stopped by making the, the soil impermeable around them. Inflow, on the other hand, refers to stormwater that enters sewers through catch basins, sump pumps, downspouts, basement drains, and defective manholes. Subsequently, the reduction of inflow cannot be done by sunnypore and requires the consequent separation and disconnection of the two collection systems. The daily work unit of Sunnypore is always one manhole-to-manhole -manhole segment, including manhole, mainline, and full lengths of all associated laterals, private and public, till floor drains in the homes or preferably external cleanouts. 
the average performance of one day is sealing approximately 560 linear feet of pipes with one sunny pore crew. The model shows typical sizes and lengths of one segment in the United States. All types and shapes of gravity-fed sewer pipes made of concrete, vitrified clay, PVC or cast iron can be flooded and sealed with sunny pore. Over the last decades, I and I reduction projects were focusing on the public main lines and manholes and omitted the main surf sources of I and I, the privately owned uh, lateral pipes in the United States. As migrating water never respects property lines, the results of these projects were actually disappointing. Reducing infiltration by 35 or 40 percent means still perpetuating 60 of the same. Sewer rehabilitation strategies are expecting to identify and locate all leaks in the collection system initially. But leaks can be anywhere and most of them are invisible. Actually, CCTV inspections cannot see all leaks or quantify the leakage rate of a pipe or segment until they are lying below groundwater or in water-saturated soil. When major and visible leaks are finally detected, different and not always compatible methods and materials are used to repair the sources of problem. Commonly, manhole coatings, different CIPPs for main lines and laterals, T-heads for the lateral connections and joint crowding for local infiltrations are applied. Each technique is using different materials and resins, which are not always linking CIPP types together. T-joints are a common uh, example for that. The annular gap between host pipe and shrinking CIPP is a constant problem, letting infiltration re-enter the system finally. Different methods would have to be executed in rotation to achieve a close to 100% tight system. In practice, this hardly ever happens. A more efficient rehabilitation strategy will have to overcome this kind of piecemeal approach and look for comprehensive methods in order to stop I and I successfully. Against infiltration, the only smart solution is to use fluids that are capable to locate and penetrate all visible and invisible leaks by nature. That is equivalent with using water for leak tests, like the mentioned standard testing method in Europe called EN 1610. Liquid grouts act like migrating water. They seek out the path of least resistance. Sunnypore applies two liquid grouts which follow the path of water, saturate soil and create by curing a watertight envelope around all defects, no matter whether we know their location or not. Now let's see what kind of intelligent solutions are used for the sunny pore process. The first of two is called S1 and is made of melted sand dissolved in water. It is the raw material of glass production, which has been used in the construction industry for centuries. By saying this, it will become clear that S1 is not a synthetic organic resin, not comparable with any chemical grout used worldwide. Both sunny pore components, S1 and S2, have passed all ecotoxicological tests without any problem. They have no hazardous emissions occur, du occurring during work. S1 has no smell at all and is not inflammable as organic materials are. Its density is 1.4, meaning it is 40% heavier than water. Its viscosity is comparable with light oil. And its thixotropic character makes it stick to surfaces. These properties enable S1 to push water away and fill the pores of soil sufficiently without being washed out again during work. In other words, water will be replaced locally by a denser liquid underground. The high pH of fluid S1 will neutralize during the reaction and hardening process with S2. It is comparable with the neutralization of cement during its conversion to concrete. 
Now to the now to the flood grouting procedure itself. All parts of the work unit or segment have to be empty. Hence manholes, main lines, as well as all laterals have to be cleaned and plugged first. Private laterals are plugged at their cleanouts or at an accessible floor drain inside the houses. The isolated segment acts like a communicating vessel. Any liquid that is filled in such a system will escape through all existing leaks by hydrostatic pressure. Both sandipore components serve two technological functions during work. They create a hydrostatic pressure, which I termed the tool, as no artificial pressure is required, and inject the soil when they become grout. Commonly, the volume of one segment is much bigger than the amount of grouts which are saturating parts of the bedding zone around the leaks. During the self-regulating process, the grout volumes of S1 are roughly twice as much as of the second component S2. The recoup tool of each sunnypore component is reusable. That is why both components require their own vac tank trucks. The cross-contamination of S1 and S2 has to be avoided by flushing the pipes and manholes before the next component is filled into the segment. Otherwise, the shelf time of S2 will be substantially reduced. Three preconditions are necessary to make the flood grouting technology work at all. Slow reaction of two grouts, no pre-mixing ratio, durable system against dilution with water. S2 is an ingeniously designed solution that is able to fulfill these requirements. It can penetrate S1 saturated soil without a quick reaction with S1 at their contact surface, which would prevent further commingling of the two components. Both components can fully react with each other without requiring a specific premixing ratio. Even dilution by groundwater or seawater does not interfere with the up reaction of both components. S2 is a lightly sour liquid, including soluble silicates and acids that are used in the food production. Hence, they are FDA-listed products. Its viscosity equates to water, hence flooded as two can constitute a hydrotest. After having flushed S1 from the inner surface of all pipes and manholes, S2 is filled into the re-plugged sewer segment. The escaping grout will penetrate and react with the S1 saturated soil and aggregate or glue the soil particles together. As the geotechnical injection takes place outside the pipes and manholes, no reduction of diameter occurs. The daily sunny pore sealing protocol, which you can see here, is the most important technological device for controlling, proving and documenting the results of the procedure step by step. When the level of any component rises up to the manhole ring, the drop is measured every five minutes. The speed of drop can be converted into the loss of gallons per minute. Each phase of flooding, starting with the initial S1 and ending with the last S2, is quantified and registered like this. The graphic chart illustrates the decelerating drop securing a successively reduced leakage rate over a period of five hours. In this case, the gradual improvement of the water tightness was achieved in two technological cycles. That means two fillings and two changes of S1 and S2 between 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. On the photo, an engineer from Sarasota was metering the final drop of S2 liquid at the end of the sealing process with a simple measuring tape. As soon as the drop of S2 comes to halt and the graph is showing an asymptote, the sealing process is completed. The initial leakage rate of the segment was 18.1 gallon per minute and it was reduced to 0.07 gallons per minute, that means a reduction of 99.6 
0.6%. Uh, the sealing process is simulating a worst case scenario under maximum possible pressure head as the manhole is filled up to street level. As anyone can see, the proof of success is a substantial part of the Sunnyport technology itself. If required, one to three sizes can be carried out within the daily labor hours. Now I want to show you the original video made for the Hungarian Academy of Sciences, which demonstrates and summarizes the previous chapters in brief. The method is based on two solutions, which, when mixed in a chemical reaction, form a gel structure providing water tightness and soil solidity as well. The chemicals used in this process do not contaminate the environment. Gravel, which is very permeable, can also be made watertight. When the two solutions meet in the soil, they surround the soil particles and fill in the spaces, resulting in a watertight soil water of suitable solidity. This characteristic is utilized in the rehabilitation treatment of not watertight sewers. The characteristics of gel systems based on continuously developed formulas for different fields of application are examined in laboratories. Now, let's see what the results of the Sunnypore grouting are looking like underground. Excavated mock pipes provide an inside view on the reacted soil grout matrix, which is chemically related to an artificially made sandstone. Its measured water tightness is similar to homogeneous clay. Its mechanical strength is comparable with weak concrete. and the adhesion strength to the exterior pipe walls vary depending on their materials, whether being concrete, clay or PVC. The grout matrix can encapsulate toxic materials on spot as heavy metals or organic contaminants. The capability is called vitrification and means putting bad stuff into glass to immobilize it. The shown plexi cube has also vitrified the coins within. The reacted and neutralized sunny pore conglomerate is chemically resistant against acid and bases between pH 1 to pH 10, against salt water and all kinds of organic solvents and oil derivatives. Along coastal lines and below industrial plants, these capabilities are very important. The design life is 50 plus years, as long as the matrix is mechanically not disturbed or destroyed. The photo shows another excavated mock pipe and the sizes of the pipe's manhole and the created grouting envelope in relation to a man. The self-regulating flood grouting procedure has created the optimum size of grout part that it was necessary to withstand the maximum hydrostatic pressure head up to the street level. The improved pipe support and the elimination of water migration will prolong the service life of the pipe 
hips and manholes without reducing their inner diameter. The model and test experiments carried out in real conditions give the opportunity to excavate the treated sewer pipes and to evaluate and analyze the results. The experiments conducted with previously made fault spots and with different soil beds provide information for the experts and help the application of the technology in a safer and more economic way. So far, I have demonstrated the two Sunnypore components and their final product in detail. Let me explain about the technological aspects of flood grouting in the next chapters. Due to the continuous measurements of drop in the manhole neck, Sunnypore provides three accomplishments that have cash value. It generates precious data of the initial leakage rate of the flooded segment, it controls the grouting procedure and proves the finally achieved water tightness in gallons per minute. This proceeding can render separate pre- and post-rehabilitation testing with water or air unnecessary, saving time and money. The shown table is a typical summary of one Sunnypore project in Mequon, Wisconsin, from 2007. Brown and Caldwell engineering firm has facilitated, accompanied and documented this pilot project. The figures reveal the initial and final leakage rates of each manhole to manhole segment. The exfiltration of liquids at maximum pressure head was reduced from 292,000 gallons to 1,400 gallons per day achieving an improvement of nearly 100%. The economy of sunny pore flood grouting is determined by its speed and efficiency. Sunny pore's ability to seal one manhole to manhole segment, including all parts in one day, can substitute three to five different methods and save minimum four labor days. The practically complete elimination of infiltration will save excess costs for transportation and treatment from day one. That certainly will result in the quickest possible payback period of the investment. When calculating the costs of transportation and treatment of 10,000 gallons of sewage between 1.5 and 5 US dollar, the elimination of excess water can actually pay for itself in a few years or months. In 2011, the Seattle Public Utility has commissioned a Sunnypore project with the technical involvement of WERF and the financial support of EPA in the amount of $250,000. The entire project was accompanied and documented by Brown and Caldwell and became subject of the WERF report in 2013, which I have mentioned earlier. It was EPA's and WERF's intention to make the, this report available for all utilities. It serves as a guideline for reducing infiltration and including private lateral pipes into rehabilitation programs. This table of the WERF report is comparing Sunnypore with other rehabilitation methods within the same project. All attributes were in favor of Sunnypore, except it does not restore structural integrity of fragmented pipes. As you have seen earlier, 
the grout envelope can still be regarded as a structural improvement for all self-supporting pipes whose bedding material has been deteriorated by migrating water and drifting backfill. Stanipore stops soil migration, sand ingress, and reduces the risk of emerging sinkholes. The WERF report made also a detailed cost analysis and comparison. The shortest overview can be seen in this slide. The figures speak their own language and need not much explanation. If the majority of pipes require not more than sealing, as we know from statistics, Sanipor will do the job. Large, po large portions of the budget can be saved for technically significant capital investments. Even the enlargement of treatment plants may render unnecessary when the cause of overloaded collection systems is eliminated. I have already spoken about the design life and durability of the sunnypore materials when explaining their chemical and physical, physical character. I was referring to sandstone or cold ceramics, improved bedding support, no inner abrasion, chemical resistance, and so on. As one has a beneficial effect on corroding concrete pipes, it stops the cause of corrosion and creates an acid-resistant inner surface that will contribute to their extended service lives as well. Let me add another aspect of the flood grouting technology. Sunny pore grout can penetrate and seal only existing leaks, not those which will occur in, let's say, 10 years. As flood grouting could easily be repeated then, we may call it an ideal corrective maintenance procedure. If the initial sealing of one segment has reduced the infiltration to close to zero, the eventually occurring new leaks will hardly provide so much excess water to the collection system that it would really matter. But let me mention, we have never had any warranty claims with Sunnypore in the last 25 years. The design life is 50 plus years under undisturbed conditions. In Europe, the obligatory guarantee time for sunny pore projects is five years. The oldest sunny pore project that has been revisited and CCTV inspected in 2015 was carried out in Berlin in 1994. Nine segments of the storm sewer had not only suffered from infiltration, but also from severe sand ingress. The geotechnical soil stabilization capability of Sunnypore was purposely required and commissioned by the design engineers at the Berlin Utility Department. The photo after the sealing process shows some white Sunnypore stains inside an empty pipe. The same has been documented in 2015. No sand or water is entering the pipes since 1994. Now let's look at some sunny pore projects in the United States. The oldest documented project was carried out in the city of St. Petersburg, Florida at the Boca Siega Island in 1992. That was before my time or personal involvement. Its goal was to remove a huge amount of tidal infiltration. The man-made island has 15 segments of 6 and 8 inch vitrified clay pipes, 98 laterals made of orange burg, that means tar paper, and one lift station. Prior to the sunny port treatment, the saltwater infiltration required 7 to 8 pumping hours per day. That was finally reduced to three hours per day. The original chart shows the infiltration rates of each segment prior and after sealing. The total amount of infiltration of seawater was initially around 167,000 gallons per day. The elimination of excess salty water and the reduction of pumping hours made a short payback period of approximately 9 to 13 months possible. In 2002, we ordered a CCTV inspection of the three worst segments during the high tide, meaning pipes below sea level. 
The results after 10 years of daily tide and low were excellent. Instead of 87 gushing and running joints and leaks before Sunnypore in 1992, only a few drippers were identified in 2002. The videos are still available. If you wonder how is that possible, the answer is lying in the chemical improvement of Sunnypore grout under seawater conditions. The 3% salt water is strengthening the silicate matrix and not deteriorating it. This project in Sarasota was carried out under my supervision. Initially, we have agreed with the design engineer from Differenze Henry in Sarasota to achieve the allowance rate of 300 gallons per day per inch mile for each segment. That benchmark was converted in the acceptable drop of S2 of approximately a quarter of an inch in the manhole shaft in the last five minutes of flooding. The table shows two initial exfiltration rates, one estimated and the other under maximum pressure head at street level with water. You can also see the final achieved exfiltration rate, rates, which were falling below the agreed allowances, calculated for each segment individually. The 99.7% overall, improve, overall improvement meant a reduction of possible water migration from 169,000 to 580 gallons per day. Sandy soil is always the optimal condition for flood grouting, which uh, produces the best sunny pore results. This map was made for the largest sunny pore project so far in Seattle in 2011. The upstream subbasin on a quiet slopey hillside at 25 sanitary sewer segments, including 88 private lateral pipes. This area could be monitored prior and after Sanipore at the flow meter inserted in the first manhole be below the outlet of the sub-basin. You can see it here. This project is well documented in the mentioned VERF report. The total reduction of exfiltration rates were again 99 percent, from 870,000 to 6,000 gallons per day under peak flow condition. In 2013, the Seattle Public Utility received the Award of Excellence in Innovation for the Sunnypore project Andy Lucas from Brown and Caldwell, as our uh, representative Marilyn Shepard, also attended the ceremony. This award was certainly meant to encourage utilities nationwide to look for new and better technical options when starting an I&I &I reduction project. The listed advantages of Sunnypore have been repeatedly proven over the last 25 years. The increasingly occurring bad reports about the quality, durability and the ecotoxic impact of CIPP and chemical grouting in the United States should incentivize skeptics and proactive design engineers to try new methods more than ever. If you belong to the proactive type of people, you will certainly want to know which are the first steps towards an I&I &I reduction project, including Sunnypore. The last but one chapter is about the plans and preparations required to carry out an I&I &I reduction project with Sunnypore. The key to success is to plan comprehensively and include all parts of the sanitary sewer collection system into the project. Sub-basins by sub-basin and segment by segment have to be targeted systematically and consequently in order to achieve the set goals. If utility members refer to legal constraints and say we may not spend public money on private property, they omit not only 60% of infiltration, but also the economic advantage of truly eliminated excess water from the system. 
To stop infiltration coming from private laterals does not necessarily mean that the public utility has to donate the homeowner a new sewer pipe. With flood grouting, the public collection system will primarily be protected by the largest portion of excess water without providing new pipes. This approach saves a lot of money that is commonly wasted on transporta transportation and treatment costs needlessly. No one has to give away the advantage of a short return of investment anymore. Certainly, more and more utilities introduce new ordinances to include all private laterals into I&I &I reduction projects, in particularly when they are under EPA consent decree. We always ask our clients to pick an upstream sub-basin with one outlet, which makes flow monitoring easy. The initial Sunnypore project should include at least 10 to 15 segments to avoid a disproportionately large volume of the tool remaining at the end of the project in relation to the volume of the used grout. Otherwise, the investment in the tool is bigger than the grout injected into the soil. Downstream manholes that are candidates for sanitary sewer overflows are getting overcharged by excess water coming from previous upstream areas. These lower segments should not be sealed in the beginning of an infiltration reduction process. One has to start in the upstream part of the collection system and move downwards with the sealing of leaking segments successively. Private laterals have to be identified and tagged according their house numbers. The available technical questionnaire of Sanipur will be a good e guideline to assess and collect all data required for volume calculations for a price offer in collaboration with local contractors. The technical preconditions of a Sunnypore project are the following. All pipes and manholes have to be cleaned, removing debris, roots, grease, hammer taps and so on. Initial CCTV inspections of all pipes will localize their correct alignments, find unmapped side branches, identify severe sacks or incrustations and broken parts. Fragmented pipes will require replacement or structural rehabilitation before sunnypore flood grouting. In new and unknown areas, we used to make water exfiltration tests in some segments in order to quantify leakage rate and compare the loss of water with allowance rates like EN 1610 or US standards. Missing cleanouts have to be installed close but outside the homes. If not possible, the access to floor drains and lateral ends have to be secured inside the building. As already mentioned, inflow reduction requires disconnecting downspouts and storm pipes from the sanitary collection system. Bottom line, before flood grouting can begin, the pipe segment should be empty and all parts of the communicating vessel have to be known and under control. No blind flights are allowed. It will be good news that Sunnyport does not require any special equipment that would not be used in the sewer business already. The most important power tools that flood grouting depends on are the two tank trucks with reliable and strong vacuum pumps. The diameter and length of all pipes and manholes will account for the filling volume of one segment. This tool volume, in addition to the pre-calculated amounts of grout, will determine the required size of tanks of the back trucks used during work. Plugs and tools for isolating segments, cleaner jetter and small CCTV push cameras for laterals belong to the technical equipment of flood grouting.
The Sunnipore components are supplied by domestic blending manufacturers and delivered in so-called IBC containers or in tanks as bulk load. Their long-term storage has to be under room temperature between 50 and 90 degrees Fahrenheit or 10 to 30 degrees centigrade. The shelf life of S1 amounts to years. The shelf life of S2 depends on its contamination with S1. Virgin material will remain suitable for use for approximately one year and used, hence contaminated, uh, S2 for several months. Finally, I want to stress again that we are here to assist engineering firms in the planning phase, supervise and document each first Sunnyport project in a new territory, while educating the regional licensed contracting company. We will make also sure that the quality insurance and quality control will be maintained by all licensed installers of the Sunnyport technology on the long term. Now that I have arrived at the end of my presentation, I want to thank you very much for your attention and your patience, and I hope that nobody has to suffer from a sunny pore information overflow right now. If you have additional questions or want to collaborate with us on a re infiltration removal project, please get in touch via email office at sunnypore.com. We will respond to your request as soon as possible. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.